This is the AM News. Welcome to the program. Starting with, government has released 60 million Ghana CDs to the scholarship secretariat for onward disbursement to 10 countries where students have been sent to undertake various courses under the government scholarship program. This follows distress calls from some students in Morocco who say their stipends have been in arrears for 10 months, leaving them devastated. We can listen to some of these students. We are pleading with the government of Ghana to come to our aid. As ladies here in this country, we are not even able to afford like the basic needs, sanitary pads, and the worst of it all is like your parents will send you money and it gets here, it's nothing. You can't even. Now, it has been more, more than 10 months. We are going to the 11th month without our stipends. We live in a country where rent is $120 per month. That's the cheapest you can get at a place without security. But we managed to live there because even the stipends we are having is not enough. Now, it has been almost 11 months without the stipends. The question is, how do we survive? Our landlords are chasing us from, from, from our apartments. Some of us are sleeping with our friends. Some of us are sleeping outside. Imagine sending your daughter to an Islamic country to come and study for 10 months without sending him money to pay his rent. How do you want her to survive? There are people having debts and they are, they are chasing them. And people are depressed. The last time we had someone who nearly committed suicide. We are asking you. Maybe you might say that we are making noise. This is not noise. This is not a story we are telling. This is not a narrative. This is what we are going through. Our lives are in danger. But speaking on Joy News, on the sidelines of the 63rd Speech and Prize Giving Day of the Pope Jones Senior High School, Registrar of the Scholarship Secretariat, Dr. Kingsley Ajiman said the arrears will be cleared as processes are far advanced to disperse the funds. You can't discuss issues of scholarships without reference to the economy. You realize that um, here are to the hitches that we started having from last year. We were even paying stipends in advance, but we are a reflection of the economy. The, the Russia special military operation in Ukraine the COVID, the ravaging effects of COVID and stuff like that, have all found expressions on the economic outlook of our country. That notwithstanding, the, 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 the Kufuadu Baumia government is very much on top of education. Remember, he said to us that education is the, is the single catalyst that has the propensity to propel us to the, the, to the generation that we want to go. Because Ghana will want to continue to remain globally competitive. So, all this grammar means that uh, His Excellency the President and Vice President have listened to the students. The Minister of Finance yesterday released a hoping amount of 60 million Ghana cities for disbursement into about 10 countries. So it's not just Morocco. We are going to sort out Morocco, Algeria, Tanzania, Serbia, Russia, China, India, uh, and the likes, 10 of them. Plans are far advanced for the release so that we sort out the UK, Canada, US and Germany. So this is a listening government that has really come to the aid of these students. And you have a very listening uh, controller accountant general who has really credited your account with the Bank of Ghana. So it means that give or take, by today's week, the monies will arrive at the various Ghana missions for disbursement to these students. So timelines give or take maximum two weeks. Well, let's see how that goes in two weeks. Now, former President John Dramani Mahama has stated that Ghana needs a government that will live by its promises and not rely on propaganda. He added that Ghana needs a government that will act, not just talk. Speaking at Hamil, he emphasized that unlike previous elections, which were always between the NDC and the NPP, this year's election is between the people of Ghana and the NPP, which has brought the country to its knees over the past seven years. Joy News Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafik Salam reports that the former president firmly believes Ghanaians will triumph over the NPP. Former President John Ramani Mahama speaking at Hamile.
Ruled and commiserated with the family of the late NDC chairman of the Lambuse constituency, Alaji Zakaria, he averred that this year's election, unlike previous elections, will be between the people of Ghana and the new Petroti Party, MPP. He is of the firm belief that the former will win. This election is not the usual election between NDC and MPP. This election is an election between the people of Ghana and MPP. And I know that the people of Ghana will win this election. Because in the short space of seven and a half years, this country has been brought down to its knees. And we're dealing with a government that only believes in propaganda. They keep repeating the same thing, the same, the same thing over and over again so that people will believe that what they're saying is true. John Ramani Mahama then Pupur claims by the Nana Ado Baumia government that they have constructed more roads in the country than any other government since independence. He queried the government over those claims using the Wasola Bombay Bole Tachiman Road, otherwise known as the N12, which is in terrible shape as an example. Hamile is a border crossing point, very important commercial center. And yet somebody goes around saying that they have done more roads in the history of this country than any other government. Just look at the road that goes to Techiman. All the trucks carrying goods to Mali and Burkina Faso pass on this road. Successive governments did that road until it was complete. Every year we used to do routine maintenance on the road, patch the potholes. Since this government came seven years ago, look at the Wasola road. Look at the Bole Bamboy Road. Look at the ba Bamboy Tichiman Road. All in a very deplorable state. And when the president or the vice president comes here and they raise it, they behave as if they didn't know. Oh, okay, we'll talk to the Minister of Roads. When are you going to do this road? Six months more. Definitely you are not going to touch the road. And yet you go, we've done more roads than any government in the history of Ghana. Where are the roads? And so we need a government that will live by its promises. We need a government that will act and not a government that will talk. And so this victory that we will win is a victory for all Ghanaians. And the victory that we'll win here in Lambusier is a victory for Chairman Zachary. The former president then headed to Kani to inspect ongoing works on the rehabilitation of the Kani Dam, which broke its banks several years ago. The rehabilitation of the dam came following a request from the chiefs and people of the area to the former president during the Building the Ghana campaign tour of the Upper West region. The economic fortunes of the people of the Kani enclave for years has been dependent on the Kani Dam, but following its banks, being broken as a result of torrential rains many of the youth of the area left to the south of the country for non-existent jobs and those at home continued to wallow in unemployment and poverty john ramani mahama was impressed with the pace and quality of work at the site that this is the kind of development our people are looking for this is what our people need so that they can earn an income for themselves. An English saying is that teach me how to fish so that I can catch fish for myself and don't bring me fish. And so I know the election season is here. There are those who will come giving you fish to eat, but there are those who will create the conditions for you to catch your own. Project is one such example that we're doing this for posterity so that you can catch your own fish, you can grow your own crops, you can use water for all kinds of purposes that you want. Before the rehabilitation is completed, the people are already grateful to the former president for intervening to change their plight. Presidency, we really are very, 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 very excited. I'm very, very thankful to you for this beautiful job you are doing for us. 
really didn't expect it. We were thinking that when you are in office that we didn't think about it. But I particularly was surprised when you said that day you were sending engineers to come and work on the dam for me. I don't know what to say for now. Time will tell. The school children who normally pass go through a long road to go. The, the bank embankment is also going to serve as a, a way for them to cross during the rainy season. Everything here that the Excellency, your mama is bringing to us is very much appreciated. And we don't know how to thank him. We are only waiting for 7 December 2024 for us to just use our thumb to complete for him. The former president, earlier was Arbolu to commiserate with the people over the loss of the Paramount chief of the area, Kura Bukele Man. He ended the tour at Jiriba, calling on the Jiriba royal family and the family of the owner of the Royal Cozy Hills Hotel, Eric Johnson, over his gruesome murder. Reporting for the News, Rafik Salam, Hamele. In the Ilembele district in the western region, cocoa farmers are alleging their livelihood is under severe threat due to the rampant illegal mining activities carried out by foreign miners and their local collaborators. The concerned cocoa farmers of Ilembele district, led by Benjamin Azachie, have made a passionate appeal to the government through their member of parliament, Emmanuel Amakofibwa, seeking urgent intervention against these destructive activities. of Alembele district, specifically from Ignace, Annette and Varos, are seeking the intervention of their member of parliament regarding the alarming illegal mining activities allegedly purported by Chinese miners in their community. Their livelihoods, they say, is intricately tied to cocoa farming, a cherished trade passed down through generations. The farmers describe how these illegal mining operations have ravaged fertile lands and contaminated vital water resources essentially for their farming practices. <laughs> After a 10 kilometer march, the demonstrators presented their petition to Emmanuel Amakofibua, who received it with a promise to act on their behalf. The farmers of Alembele district placed their trust in their MP to champion their cause in parliament and to advocate for the perfection of their livelihoods, environments and rights. And I listen to the petition, I listen to the agony and the cries of the, the go farmers. It resonates across the country. This is exactly why every cocoa farmer is crying why every cocoa farmer, every farmer indeed in Ghana is on his knees. Because reckless people have basically joined hands 
with Chinese and Ghanaian collaborators and unknown faces and are basically destroying our farms. No wonder that Ghana is at the bottom of cocoa production in history. The cocoa sector is completely gone. If you want to understand why Ghana's cocoa sector is in shambles, just come to Elembele District. This agent's appeal highlights the ongoing struggle of the cocoa farmers in Elembele District. Their fight against illegal mining is a fight to preserve their heritage, environment, and the future of their community. Chinese miners and their Ghanaian collaborators have encroached upon our cocoa farms without consent. Ravaged fighter lands, contaminating our precious labor bodies. The environmental degradation caused by these farmers. Moreover, when our farms are seized, the miners arbitrarily set compensation prices without engaging any farmer. The lack of formal agreement or fear leads us, the locals, to accept inadequate compensation. For Joy News in Athalia Kwanza, Western Region. In other stories, the Tree Crop Development Authority has established a share pricing mechanism to address the pricing challenges facing the share industry. The price mechanism, which will commence this season, would create an enabling environment for the sector. The Chief Executive Officer of the TCDA disclosed this at the launch of this year's Share Expo in Tamale. The expo brought together stakeholders in the share sector to share knowledge, experience and explore ways to further develop and promote the share industry. Speaking at the event, the Chief Executive Officer of the Tree Crop Development Authority, William Quato, said the authority has instituted some measures to regulate the share sector. In our endeavor to create an enabling environment for regulating and developing the tree crop sector, TCDA has initiated several regulatory actions that stimulate the private sector investment, particularly in the share industry. In collaboration with Cocoa Board, through the ILO Productivity Ecosystem for Decent Work, for Decent Work Project, TCD has constituted and innovated a 17-member share technical working group and established a share price mechanism and formula in Ghana that will be implemented from this coming season. The executive director of the Cocoa Health, Edwin Afari, said they will continue to invest in research, domesticate the crop and support local processing. For us in Cocoa Board, we believe that we can invest more in research, domesticate the crop, and then also support local processing. We should invest resources to save the tree from fires and from charcoal production, of course, to provide the livelihoods for millions of households in the north and then to add value to share. The executive director of the Savannah Golden Tree Limited, Chief Adam Tampuli, said the country was exporting over 70,000 tons of share and share butter annually. Today, we are probably one of the biggest exporters. We export over 70,000 tons of share nuts and share butter annually generating an impressive estimated value of over 112.6 million U.S. dollars. The Northern Regional Minister Shani al hassan Shaibu requested the support of all to change the narrative that the region is a violent region. Today we are witnessing yet another launch of the Share Expo. It means Tamale and for that matter, UDS is doing something to deserve these accolades. Tamale is peaceful. And we want to encourage people to help us change the brand name Tamale from a violent area 
to the most peaceful city in Ghana. The former municipal chief executive for Sanerigo, Adja Maria Midrisu, who represented the second lady, Samira Baumia, said the industry plays a significant role in the economic development of the youth and women. The share industry is the cornerstone of the northern region's economy, providing crucial income and employment for thousands of women and youth. It plays a significant role in poverty reduction and economic empowerment. Ochin Hene Osaje Fuamwete Oforipenin is urging the privileged in society to come back to their roots and support the development of their communities. Speaking at a deba organized in his honor by the Adontain Division of the Achim Ibuakwa State as part of activities to commence his 25th anniversary celebration on the ascension to the Ofori Penin stool, Osaje Fuamwete Ofori acknowledged that many citizens from Kukrantumi and Tafo have risen to higher places. He said the Adontain Division of Achim Ibuakwa State is a citadel of knowledge which is evident in the many educational institutions scattered over Kukrantumi and Tafo. He asked the natives of the town to return home and support since development is a shared responsibility. Maxo Kudeko has more in the following report. He hinted there are several big ways in the information technology industry and other sectors of the economy contributing to national development. He admonished those privileged in high places to come home and support the development agenda of Ochiman. Ochihi acknowledged that there are some impasses within a section of the Adonting Division. However, he encouraged all interested parties to follow due traditional and customary procedures in resolving matters relating to chieftaincy. Delivering the state of Adonting address to the people of Adonting, the Adonting Dasibre Buama Dakun elogized the Ochihi on his exceptional leadership and service to humanity for the past 25 years. He mentioned the numerous developmental projects spearheaded by the Ochihi, including the construction of 10 basic schools, christened the Amotia of Repenin Model Schools, the establishment of the University College of Agriculture, Environment and Science, and other initiatives to stem the tide of climate change and global warming. Bye. The Adontin Division is the second in command in the institutional hierarchy of the Achim Ibuakwa State. The Adontin assumes responsibility over the administration of the Achim Ibuakwa State in the absence of the Ochihin. It is one of the largest divisions in the Achim Ibuakwa State structure with over 155 towns and villages. Some of the towns and villages within the Adonting Division include but not limited to Kukrentumi, Tafo, Esium, Apepem, Techiman, Osiem, Adweji, Nkronso, Akoku, amongst others. Reports by Masuo Kudeko for Joy News. Coming up next is the business update with Benjamin Nakako.
time for business now. And in our first story, Senior Lecturer of Finance at the University of Ghana Business School, Dr. Benjamin Amwa, has asked the government to fulfill its part of the bargain by committing resources to the Financial Stabilization Fund as a measure of supporting financial institutions affected by the domestic debt exchange program. His comments follow the World Bank's approval of the release of $250 million to support the five-year Ghana Financial Stability Project. Now, speaking to Joy Business, Dr. Amwa said the fund from the Bretton Woods Institution uh, was inadequate to achieve its purpose. Therefore, the need for government to show commitment by shoring up the Financial Stabilization Fund. The government of Ghana reached that agreement with the World Bank. And so, if the World Bank is making due its part of the bargain, it is just fair for the government of Ghana to show commitment. You know, you are in trouble and they are coming to assist you. So you should show a lot of commitment by also contributing your quota to the fund. And so, the uh, government of Ghana will have no option than to show the needed commitment. Don't forget, this is also a credit facility. So what it means is that at a point in time, we will have to pay back. Definitely, government of Ghana will have no option than to show interest. Like they say, half a loaf is better than none. The 250, although it's not enough, it's a good starting point for us. Our government must also contribute its part. Now, the ECOWAS Brown Card Insurance has settled claims of over 3 million Ghana cities in the last couple of years to accident victims in the sub-region. The scheme, which caters for citizens of ECOWAS states who travel across uh, the sub-region, uh, has been serving this purpose. Now, addressing the media at an enforcement exercise with the MTTD of the Ghana Police, General Secretary of the Ghana Bureau, Richard Eshen, called on motorists to insist on the collection of their ECOWAS Brown Card insurance certificates whenever they purchased a motor insurance cover. In Ghana, when you buy your auto insurance policy, you have also paid for uh, the ECOWAS Brown Card insurance. That means that if you buy your motor insurance policy, you have to insist on the insurance company to take your motor um, Equus Brown Car certificate. And this will allow you to travel to the neighboring countries or the West African countries. They are 14. It. Oh, if you go there and there's any accident, this is the insurance that will cover you. If you look behind you, you see all the Burkina tracks. Um, as a matter of a couple of weeks ago, we were in Burkina Faso, and uh, we settled claims over 150 million CFA, which is about 3 million Ghana cities. You, you understand? So I would say this has been very successful, and it complements the objective of ECOWAS. You know, the objective of ECOWAS is to um, economic integration and promote free movements of goods and services persons and uh, when people come to your country and they get into accident there's this there that will provide them with the necessary coverage That's it for the business update. Handing over back to Sweetie Abochi. Yes, Benjamin. And on that note, we're ending the AM News to start the conversations with the new Super Review segment. Stick and stay. We're back in a jiffy. <laughs>